Okay. Um, I put a form, you can see it at the bottom of the video, where you can ask me questions if you want to. Um, I had been going to do a more like what like like multi-choice things like what types of content would you like to see more of but like ultimately it, the only thing that really seemed useful was to ask if you have a question and yeah so like occasionally occasionally I look at the results of that form and I think about answering a question um, I have I have answered two of these already out of out of nine so that that's that's a good good ratio let's see um hey michael big fan since 868 hack thanks <laughs> when my question when you create a new design game slash mechanic slash ability which criteria slash values do you use to validate if a new mechanic is good slash fun what values do you use? Good. Big question? Okay. Um, okay, so first, like, this, this concept of fun, like... I don't put it as a first priority. Um, if... I'd rather something be interesting than, than fun, but generally I find that if it is interesting and I explore it and present it well enough, then, then it ends up being fun. It's not necessarily fun in the middle, but by the time it's done, it, people find it fun. But yeah, fun's not the value I'm trying to maximize. Um, So good, that's <laughs> good. Um, it's intuitive, <laughs> like, like that the process of deciding what is good is, it's not, it's not something reducible, it's like, how do I feel about it? of my whole subconscious having feelings about things. Um, I just go with what I find interesting. But, like... For... For a whole game, I'm evaluating is this game what I want to be working on? Like, not what I want to have made, not what I think other people want, but is this what I want to be working on? Because that's, I've talked about this before, like that's, okay, like in the long run, you'll have spent more time having made it than actively making it, but, but to make it, you have to make it. So like, you have to be, you have to be clear that that's, that is something you actually want to do. And yeah, so, so, I prioritize interesting to work on, and I mean that's that's a criticism people could level at me. Like, I I tackled problems that are interesting for me as a, as a designer, but like it tends to come out that when you do that, it is something that players find interesting as well. Not necessarily the mass market, but good players. Like, <laughs> I really like the people who play my games. Like the the Bro Games Discord that that Viva Fringe started up. It's a good bunch of people. I really. It's, I mean, in this, in, in the in the difficult times it's been a really good support and encouragement to me to like 
every few days I, I look in and that people are talking about stuff that I made or stuff that other people made that they like and I'm just like friendly good yeah like I I'm going off on a side track now this happens but I I'm not trying to chase like the mass market and like I've seen what happens when you do it, like the 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 kind of players you get and the kind of discourse that happens at okay, they they're people, like they they were born as a perfect baby, like they, they, they have a, a heart and like they're, they're fundamentally good, but obviously like a lot of people in the world are, in terms of where they are, what they're doing right now, not being wonderful. And yeah, I, you have to, I don't want to, I, I just don't want that around me, that, that gamer nastiness, and yeah, just by being, by making what, what seems good and worthwhile to me, the, the players that I have attracted through my work, uh, It's, it's good people. <laughs> Thank you. Um, really, like one time years ago, um, on Twitter, someone was tweeting to me like something kind of mean and just like silly about about one of my games. And I retweeted it, which, like, you shouldn't do, I think. Um, in general, when someone with a lot of following, re, re whatever it's called now, repeats something that means something someone said to them, that's like an invitation for their followers to pile on and like it's a bad dynamic so like I'd, I'd seen this directed at me I felt bad about it I wanted to share how I was feeling so I, I retweeted it and then started feeling about that like oh have I have I invited a pile on? And I went back to Twitter and I opened up and there was this whole, like, lots of notifications. I was like, oh no, like, I've, I've done the mean thing. <laughs> and then I looked and it was just this really gentle, thoughtful discussion. Just like a couple of people who liked my games had, had responded thoughtfully and, and the person who'd been Rrr, had softened and was just like giving thoughtful criticism and being engaged with them, it's just like, wow, I, <laughs> I had this moment of, like, weakness where I did, like, the wrong thing, but I've, I've managed to surround myself with the right people that, that that hasn't been a harmful thing, and, yeah, do good work, do good work and like don't you know if I was if I was doing like the race to the bottom try and get 
as many audience as possible whoever it is like that wouldn't have been what happened it would have been like rah 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 play more like um, yeah I, I mean like financially yes I'd, I'd, I'd like a larger audience and I mean there are more there are more people out there who like games and have their hearts in the right place <laughs> right so like, that's not a that's not a limitation to, I just do not want that toxic gamer energy like <laughs> the, yeah just don't want it um, what was the question validate if a mechanic is good <laughs> Well, it is a mechanic, it's good. Does it bring toxic gamer flame wars? Um, no, like... Once a game is going, then... You're asking the game what it wants? Like, it, it, it starts to take on an identity outside of you. And... Like there's a role reversal, like you start making a thing and then at some point the thing comes to life and then it starts making itself through you. So it's... I mean, intuition is, is one word. It's... Having sufficient inner stillness that you can hear something so subtle as the voice of a game that doesn't even exist yet. There is my woo answer. Great. Um, what inspires your creative process? Your games are very different from the style of most commercially available games. Um, I'm a lot inspired by games. Like, like, I love games. Um, I when I when I can find the time and space now I play games and and, and inspired by them. Um, and I love games and I hate games. Like I was playing I was playing last night. I started playing Moon Ring, which is free. Like it's like for free. It's a <laughs> Amazing deal. Um, it's a RPG in a classic style. Uh, it's like cool neon. It's cool, um, and it just has all the crap. Like, are you wearing chain armor or plate armor or leather greaves? Or like, are you going across the world map and you have a random encounter and it's one beetle and you. And like, you know, go into a dungeon, and then there's something hitting you, and like, random numbers happen, and then maybe you're okay or not, and then you just go running around a pillar until your something regenerates, and then you hit it again, and it's just like. But like it's a it's a world and there's mystery and there's like the five moons and like you talk to people and get clues. But then the talking people it's like they say words and like you type in like words that they've said and then they tell you more about them and it's just like this grinding to get the clues. But like then there's a sense of mystery and wonder, like what's going on in this world? Like why why is there and then there's like a mist that like drives people mad and like makes monsters and it's just like games but like why is there a mist that makes monsters like it's, it's, I don't, yeah and i don't know how to get that sense of world place mystery without 
Oh, what crap? Be trying my my pro bikes as people call them now. Uh, RPGs minus the grinding and equivalent item slots and stuff. And I've done good work reducing that to like the playable minimum and like having then evolving that interesting directions but like when you take all of that out there isn't the space for the mystery like walking back and forth across the town to find to talk to the priest and then go back from the priest to talk to the ex archon and then back to the alchemist to buy healing like all the like just moving traversing space when it could just be a menu just like be done with it like like that space is what gives you places to hide secrets and just just a sense of it being yeah sorry I was getting a bit impassioned there Skill, breath control. Breath control. Mm. So, what was the question? What inspires my process? I think of having to commercially adopt it. So, I I get inspired by the stuff I love in games, and I get inspired by the stuff I hate in games to try and do better than that, like to, to take all the bits I don't like out and just have the bits I do like and expand on those. And with pa partial success, but I, I haven't figured out how to take out all the bits I don't like and keep all the bits I do like. Yeah, it's really... Yeah, I'm not, I'm not an outsider artist, like, I'm, I'm working in the medium of games because I quite like games, and my inspiration is very much in dialogue with, with what exists. I also take, take inspiration from books and music and art and dance and the world, like, it's, it's not hermetic, but, like, it, I'm primarily making games about games, so <laughs> it's not... How are you? Like, how are you really? <laughs> nice question. Um, hmm. Big question. How am I really? I mean, right now I'm sitting in the forest, like, I always, I always feel good. So like the, the very present moment, things are good. Um, am 
my physical health is maxed. Like I, I since I started having some work stress, I've been having fatigue days consistently, uh, at least every week. Um, so that's bad because for for some months before that I I had only been having once a month or less, which was amazing. Um, but like that was, you know, that was with getting a lot of rest and not trying to accomplish much. So it was really like skirting around it. Mm. Since I've been doing the office work more, my physical fitness has gone down a bit because there's only so many hours. I've been I've been working a lot at the computer on the game, so I haven't been as attentive to my body. So in the new year, I'm working to restore that balance a bit. Mm. But like in terms of my mental health, like doing work productively making a game has been really good for me. Um, it's just a thing that I do, and it's a thing that I, as part of my self-definition, I, I make games. And I wasn't, I wasn't finding purchase to do it, like I wasn't, I do bits and pieces, but I wasn't able to consistently stick at it for enough time, enough days in a row to get momentum. And now I have, so, like, there's momentum. So that feels really good. And because my mental capacity was reduced at some points with the fatigue, um, like that, that was worrying. And it's really good to like, be really testing my my mind against hard design problems and to see the solutions coming out and see okay like that's that's functioning that's like I'm back <laughs> that's really relieving um, yeah I'm doing good work I'm doing good work and that that, that feels good. Mm. I'm still feeling really feeling the financial insecurity that stresses me. Um, yeah, it, it helped a lot that I got some money from a publisher. It's looking like it might have to stretch further than I'd hoped. Um, but yeah, it's helped so much that people have been giving me money on Patreon. And uh, yeah, when Bef yeah, before I started the Patreon, uh, it was it was bad. And I started that when I was when I'd recovered enough that I felt like I could at least consistently do something. And I have pretty consistently kept up these videos that I'm doing something like I'd hoped to do more in terms of jams, small releases, but that's not, that's not where I've been. Um, I'm not, Just, just with small children and stuff, I don't have the capacity to have like so many different pots boiling at once. And yeah, it's, 
but you know, I, I, I released anything for this. Let's go get it. The situation is much bigger than it was, and like this one's getting bigger to the point where my wife will be able to go back to work if that's what we need, which like it probably will be at least part time. Um, but we'll, we'll figure that out. Um, there's a lot more independent <coughs> than yeah than when I started this. source of stress. But yeah, we used up our savings over the pandemic. And I hope the game I'm making makes money because like it's I can't just spin off little things like I Burdened and younger and unfatigued and all like I could just there's just like abundance like I was happy to just like make a game release it for free or like people were saying that I was charging too much for my game so I was like okay I'll release this one for a dollar to see like when when there's when there's that abundance you're free to experiment but don't don't release a game for a dollar it's a stupid idea I thought it was a stupid idea. But like enough people were saying that I tried it, it was a stupid idea. Don't do it. Um, but yeah, I, I had the, the abundance to be free to check those things rather than just assume. Um, but it's a, it's a stupid idea. Um, then I released a game on iOS for like eight dollars or something, and everyone told me like. You're charging too much for it, you can't charge that much on iOS for a mobile game. And, like, that's my best selling game, it's made the most money, so, um, yeah, people don't know what they're talking about. Yeah, but, like, ask me more questions, because, like, it's, I, I don't know if most of you care about that, but I know, like, at least someone at some point thought that that might be an interesting thing. To hear what I had to say about it, so I, I, I gave it a go. <laughs> like, <laughs> um. 